Mutual Broadcasting System presents The Mysterious Traveler, written, produced, and directed by Robert A. Arthur and David Coburn, and starring tonight two of radio's foremost personalities, Leon Janney and Marilyn Erskine, in The Big Brain. This is The Mysterious Traveler, inviting you to join me on another journey into the realm of the strange and the terrifying. I hope you will enjoy the trip, that it will thrill you a little and chill you a little. So settle back, get a good grip on your nerves, and be comfortable, if you can, as you hear the story I call The Big Brain. <laughs> My story begins in one of the manufacturing plants of the Worldwide Business Machines Corporation. In one wing of the plant is housed the huge laboratories of the company, where newly designed and experimental calculating machines are built and tested. It is evening, and the vast laboratory with its long rows of intricate-looking machines is deserted, except for a young university professor, Lester DeWitt. Tall, lanky, and in his early 30s, DeWitt stands before a massive machine that dwarfs all others in the laboratory. Swiftly, efficiently, he presses tabulating keys on the control board, oblivious of all else. 3.521 to the eighth digit, 74.3 to the third digit, 74.56 to the fourth digit, is that you, oh, Professor Dewis? Hmm? Oh, uh, yes, Pop, I'm at the big brain. 6.527 to the fourth digit. Now, you brought your visitor, Professor. Hmm? Uh, visitor? <gasps> Julia! Well, I'm glad to see that you at least remember my name. Of course, Professor, I'm not supposed to allow anyone in here but our engineers and university people like yourself. But I figured seeing you and hers engaged. Thanks, Pop. That's all right. Joy, seeing young people get together. Oh, Julia, I'm terribly sorry. I, I, I forgot completely. Were, were you waiting long? Only a half hour. By then, I realized I'd been stood up. Oh, well, I'm honestly, Julia, I, I, I had no idea it was so late. I, I decided to run a test at 5.30 and, 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 and be, be, be finished by, by 6, <laughs> 6. 6.30 at the latest. And, and, and... If you could only see your face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you, you aren't angry with me. No, no, I'm not angry. I'll just have to accept you for what you are, an absent-minded professor. Hmm. Well, so this is my arrival. I've never seen such a huge machine. Hmm. It weighs over 50 tons. 50 tons? That's right. The staff here at the plant calls it the big brain. It's the only one of its kind in the world, Julia. Lester, those thousands of keys, levers, do you know what each one of them is for? Why, yes, of course. Oh. Oh, look at it. Do you realize that the big brain can calculate elliptical integrals? Was that good? Good? Why, human mind has never been able to solve elliptical integrals. There have been no methods of solution, but this machine can. Oh. The big brain, Julia, can solve in a few seconds a problem that would take a scientist a lifetime to work out. <laughs> There's one thing your big brain can do, Professor. No? Oh, what's that? It can take this racing sheet and dope out the winners of tomorrow's races. Oh. <laughs> Still playing the horses, eh, Pop? Yep. Not doing so good, either. Well, I gotta make me rounds. Nice talking to you, young folks. Good night, Mr. Collins. Good, good night, Pop. Good night. Oh, I really should be jealous of that machine, Les. A certain light appears in your eyes when you speak of it. Sometimes I think that you care more for that. But you really don't believe that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, no, not really. Hey, look, Pop left his racing paper behind. <laughs> what are you looking through it for? Hmm? Well, I, I've never read a racing sheet before. Ah, it's interesting. Very interesting. You know, this racing sheet is a treasury of facts. Why, in each race alone, there are over a thousand facts to be taken into consideration. Yes. Now, Les, you aren't going to spend the rest of the night studying that paper, are you? I had always been inclined to think that horse racing was a matter of sheer luck. That isn't so at all. Look at all the information that's available in this paper. 
I can't understand why Pop thought the big brain couldn't calculate the winners of these races. You mean you think it could? I see no reason why it shouldn't be able to. In view of all these facts we have on past performances. Lester, you aren't serious, are you? Of course I am. Would you like to try it as an experiment? An experiment? Yes. We'll put all these facts through the machine. Oh, this I have to see, by all means. All right. First, it's a matter of learning what all these abbreviations and symbols stand for. Then... Yes? It's merely a matter of your reading the facts on past performances and my feeding it to the machine. Going away, nine dollars and fifty cents. Flying ghost. Flying ghost. October fifth, nineteen forty-nine. October fifth, nineteen forty-nine. Belmont Park. Hmm. Three year olds and up. Three year olds. Claiming okay. five thousand dollars. A mile and an eighth. Yeah. One hundred and twenty pounds. Jockey Riker. Track fast. Okay. Post position fourth. fourth. Start sixth. Mm. Quarter fourth. Mm. Half fourth. Three quarters third. Third. Mile third. Stretch third. Finish third. Mm. Two lengths. Two lengths. Driving. Five dollars and twenty cents. Five dollars and twenty cents. Oh, mm. that does it. Eight races. Now that you've given all the facts to the machine, what's next? I pull this lever, and the calculator goes to work. Good Lord. How, how long does it take? It's just a matter of seconds. I mean, do you really think it'll work? Work? Of course. Unless the machine breaks down. And as you can see, it's working perfectly. Yeah. The solution has been attained. Well, where is it? I merely have to pull this lever, and it will be printed on a sheet of paper and ejected at this point here. Watch. There. Oh, let me see it. Uh, first race winner, yet a deer. Place, speeding folly. Show, Quaker girl. And it has the results of the other races as well. Naturally. And these horses are the winners? Oh, yes, no question of that. Tomorrow night, we'll buy an evening paper with the racing results, and you'll see for yourself. Les. Yes? If you're so sure that these are the winners, why not make a small bet on the first race? A small bet? Yes. Bet $2 to win on Yetta Deer in the first race. Then if Yetta Deer wins, as you say she will, put all the winnings on the second race, then the third, fourth, fifth... But, but, but I, I couldn't do that. Why not? Well, it wouldn't be ethical. Oh. I'm here from the university as a guest of this company. Oh, now, let's stop being stuffy. We've been saving for a year now to get married. If the machine is right, we can win enough money to buy all our furniture. Who knows? Maybe even a house. Oh, I'm sorry, Julia, but I'm afraid I couldn't. Oh, why are you so stubborn? Who could it possibly harm? And think of what it would mean to us. Well, yes, I know. Please, don't. Uh, uh, pardon me. Where can I make a two-dollar wager? All right here, friend. What's your pleasure? My pleasure? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Well, I, uh, I, I'd like to bet on Yetta, dear, in the first race at Hialeah. Two bucks? Yes, please. All right, here you are. Yetta, dear, paid six twenty. Here you are. Thank you. Now, I'd now like to bet six dollars to win on Morning Glory in the second race at Hialeah. Six on the nose of Morning Glory. That's right. Okay, you're covered. All right, here he is, boss. Come in, Professor DeWitt. Come in. Hmm? I'm Victor King. Well, how do you know who I am? It's my business to know the names of the people who patronize my establishments. All right, Steve, that'll be all. Okay, boss. I'll be outside. Wait. Well, I understand, Professor, that you selected the winners of eight straight races. And that I owe you $24,250. Yes, that's right. You'll find that I'm a businessman who pays off promptly. 
Thousand dollar bills be all right? Uh, yes. Yes, of course. Tell me, eight winners, uh, what do you attribute it to? Oh, just luck. Luck, huh? Hmm. Here you are. 24,250. What's wrong? Uh, Lose something? My, uh, my wallet. I, I can't seem to find it. Oh, yes. Your wallet. I have it here. Hmm? Must have dropped it a little while ago in the racing room. One of my men found it and turned it over to me. Naturally, I had to go through it to find out who the owner was. Yes, I, uh, I, I suppose so. Besides $17, there are a number of things in it. Driver's license, a state university faculty card, a pass for admittance to the technical laboratory of worldwide business machines, and this sheet of paper. Oh, uh, oh, yes. That. Very interesting, Professor. How's listed the selection of win, place, and shows for today's eight races at Hialeah? Strangely enough, every horse in this list came in exactly as selected. How'd you explain that, Professor? I don't have to explain it. Now, if you'll be so good as to return my wallet and everything that was in it... I'm I... sorry, Professor, but I'm afraid you'll have to play ball. Whether you want to or not. What do you mean? Sit down, Professor, and I'll tell you. Sit down, Professor. Yes. That's it. Now we can really get down to business. <laughs> And then, Julia, he showed me pictures that had been taken of me in the racing room. Half a dozen of them, all showing me making bets. Oh, no. Yes. Why, why, he even had a camera hidden in the wall of his penthouse office, which filmed everything I said and did up in that penthouse. But he was just laying a trap for you. Yes, he certainly was. But you, you didn't tell him how you'd gotten the winners of the races today. No, no, but I, I think he suspects. He found my wallet. And in it, the pass to the laboratory of worldwide business machines. And he saw the sheet with the names of the winners printed on it. And he demands that you give him the winners of every day's races? Yes, yes. It's blackmail. Pure and simple. He has all the evidence he needs. But, Lester, if you were to go to the university officials, the president of worldwide business machines... It would be uh... the end of my academic career. You know how the university is about such things. They'd regard the, my use of the, of the big brain as, as dishonesty. Worse. Oh, it's all my fault. All my fault. It was I who made you bet on those horses. Oh, no, no. Nonsense, darling. If, if I really hadn't wanted to, you, you couldn't have made me. But, Les, what are you going to do? What can I do? I've got to supply King with the winners. If I don't, he'll expose me. Ruin my career. <laughs> What about a cigar, Professor? Drink? No. I'm no, feeling you. good. Really good. Three days in a row, all the winners at high layer. Yes, sir, I'm feeling good. By the way, I'm putting your share of the winnings aside, Professor. It now amounts to 46000 You can have it any time you want. I told you before, I don't want any part of that money. My purpose in coming here was to explain to you that... I can no longer go on with it. You can't go on with it. Why not? How can I expect you to understand the matter of ethics? Ethics? You can't. All I'm interested in is money. Now, listen to me, Professor. You're going on supplying me with winners. We're playing this out to the finish. The finish? When will that be? I'll let you know. Now, today is Monday. I'm figuring on flying out to Santa Anita in a few days for the big handicap on Saturday. I want you to dope out the winners as soon as possible. I'm figuring on making a real killing at the track. I won't do it. Now, Professor, we don't have to go over that again. Yeah, I see we do. Okay, Professor, I'll put it on the line. Straight, no trimmings. Sit down. This may take a little time. <laughs> Seven flights, A, 22 flights, B, 10 flights, C, 9 flights, D, 6 flights, total 47. Oh, 
Lester, so here you are. Yes? I've tried to find you everywhere. Oh. Oh, hello, Jane. I phoned you at home and the university. Then I thought I'd come here. Did you see Victor King? Yes. I saw him. Well, what did he say? I mean, when you told him you were through with him. He said that isn't the way he plays ball. It seems I have to play his way. Or else. Oh, Les. Mr. King is a master of blackmail. Well, Les, what are these hundreds of books? What are you doing? These are flight records of the different airlines that fly to the West Coast. These records go back five years. Well, what are you doing with them? I'm entering these records into the big brain. Trying an experiment. I don't know whether or not it'll work. What kind of an experiment? I'm attempting to find out if the big brain, given all available flight information, can determine the date and time of a future plane crash. A future plane crash? Yes. But why? Victor King is going to fly to California within the next few days. As yet, he hasn't decided what flight he's taking. Well, what has that got to do... Less. Why not? What else can I fight back with? Maybe this whole experiment is crazy, but... But if the big brain can determine future plane crashes, and if one is due to occur within the next five days, I'm going to do my best to see to it that Victor King is on that plane. Yes, what you're doing is insane. Maybe. Time will tell. You must listen to me. You've got to go to the university officials and make a clean breast of things. I'm sure that they'll... There. The solution has been attained. Let me see it. Flight 106, Universal Airlines, 4.30 p.m. New York to Los Angeles. Crash 6.31 near Canton, Ohio, February 24th. February 24th. That was Friday. And King wants to be in California Saturday for the races. Lester, this information, it can't be right, can it? It's the law of averages, Julia. Scientists, given all the facts, can work out an approximation of accidents. The big brain has the ability to pinpoint facts, calculate them to a degree beyond the human mind, and reach a definite conclusion. You mean there's no question about it? Flight 106 will crash February 24th. The big brain hasn't been wrong as yet. So there's... Always a first time, of course. But, Les, if there's a possibility of that plane crashing, we've got to go to the airline and warn them. If I went to them and told them, gentlemen, I believe that Flight 106 on February 24th is going to crash, what do you think they would say? They'd have me placed under mental observation. But, Les, if that plane crashed is killing innocent people, you, you'd never forgive yourself. What's going to be, will be. I can't prevent that which is ordained to happen. And you're going to try to see to it that Victor King is on flight 106. Yes. Come what may, I've got to make sure he's on that flight. Hello? Hello, Professor. This is Victor King. Yes, Mr. King. It's already Wednesday afternoon. Why haven't I received the winners of Saturday's races at Santa Anita? I'm afraid I can't have them for you until Friday afternoon, around four. Why not? I've got to have last-minute scratches and other information to be able to calculate the winners. Friday afternoon? That doesn't give me much time to get to Santa Juanita. Why don't I meet you at the airport Friday afternoon at four o'clock? There's a 4.30 plane to California. Flight 106. Get you there at midnight. Flight 106, huh? It's 4.30. That sounds all right. Then I'll meet you at the airport at 4 o'clock. Good. I'll be expecting you. Don't worry, King. I'll be there. Uh, there's the gate for flight 106 straight ahead. Lester, I wish you wouldn't go through with it. Won't you please go to the airline? Tell them that there's a, a chance 106 may crash. I told you, Julia, they'd only think I was insane. Now be quiet now. There's King standing at the gate with his bodyguard. Hello, Professor. You're getting it rather fine, aren't you? It's already 425. The plane's ready to leave. I was delayed by traffic. Here's the list of winners for tomorrow's races. 
Good. Walk me to the plant. I want to talk to you. All right. Hey. Big race tomorrow. Citation isn't the winner? That's right. Oh, this is perfect. Perfect. All the big money will be on Citation. Will we clean up? All passengers, please get aboard. Good thing, honey. That's when I've got a little surprise for you and your girlfriend. Surprise? Yes, that's right. Me and Steve here are taking you with us. We're going to show you the time of your life. Yes, sir. But, but we we can't go. I I I have classes. What are you talking about? This is Friday. We'll have you back by Monday. Now get aboard. But we haven't any clothes. Yes, you have. I brought along clothes for both of you. Everything's been taken care of. <laughs> you two are going. We have to carry you both. No, no, I I won't go. I Look, I, I want a great trouble to fix up this trip, and you're going. Get her on that plane, Steve. But can't you understand? Oh, stop! Put you... me down. I don't want to go. Tell him to put her down. Come back. Julia. <laughs> okay, Stewardess. So they're going aboard. Tell the pilot we're all set. Let's go. Les, what time is it? Julia, stop asking me the time every minute. I just told you. What's the matter with you, too? Don't you like flying? been sitting on the edge of your seats ever since we took off. Yeah, you think they were going to a funeral instead of California. And the best time they ever had. <laughs> Les, I can't stand this much longer. You've got to tell them it's our only chance. Tell them? Yes. Maybe you're right. King. What is it, Professor? Come a little closer. I've got something to tell you. Sure. What is it? This plane. It's going to crash at 6.31. Crash? What are you talking about? You heard me. The plane is going to crash. I like a joke, but that's not funny. It's not a joke. Can't you see that he's serious? How do you know the plane is going to crash? The same way I found out about the winners. The big brain. If you aren't leveling with me, I'll... Yes, you are. You're scared. Really scared. I'm getting scared, too. Why'd you let us in for this? You must have known before we got on this plane... Oh, I get it. You didn't figure on me taking you along. Hey, boss, we've got to do something. Uh, I'll settle with you two later. Come on, Steve. What are you going to do? You'll see. Have you gun ready, Steve. I'll make the pilot set us down, but fast. Yeah, 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 sure. Here's where we take over. Well, I'm sorry, sir, but passengers aren't allowed up here. Steve. A gun? Yeah. Now, listen, bright boy, you and your little playmate here are going to set this plane down, but fast. What for? Because I say, son, I don't argue. Land this plane. The nearest airfield's 20 minutes away, and it can't Shut take... up. Set it down now. This minute, make an emergency landing. You must be out of your mind. Steve, count of five. If he doesn't start putting down, give it to the co-pilot. Right. One, two, three, four. Okay, you're calling it. Pete, give me a read. Speed, 240 MPH. Altitude, 4,500. As we come over this mountain, there's a large field. We'll try to set down on it. Roger. Don't let us stall, boss. We've got to get down. Oh, yeah. Come on. Put this plane down. Mister, if you want to take over, just say the word. Give me a reading, Pete. Speed. 255 MPH. Altitude. 2,000 feet. It's getting dark fast. We'd better circle the field a couple of times. Out cycle. Just land. Pete, give it to the passengers over the PA. Roger. We are now preparing to land. Passengers are asked to remain calm. Please fasten all safety belts. You two guys better go back to your seats, fasten your belts. It's going to be a rough landing. Yeah, but it's all the same to you. We'll stay right here where we can keep an eye on you. Suit yourself. You don't mind if Pete and me strap ourselves in, do you? Cut the chatter and land. Give me a reading, Pete. Speed, 230 MPH. Altitude, 800 feet. Flaps down. Flash down. Landing gear down. Landing gear down. Landing lights on. Landing lights on. Reading. Speed. 180 miles. Altitude. 500 feet. Speed. 145. Altitude. 200 feet. Speed. 135. 125. 115. 95. 
down. 80. 70. Bob, there's a drainage ditch across the field. Take her up. Too late. Hang on. Julia. Julia, where am I? You're in a hospital. Huh? You've been unconscious almost three hours. Oh. But the doctor says you'll be up in a few days. Why? The plane crash. Yes. Julia, are you all right? I was just shaken up, nothing else. Oh. Inspector King. What about him? King and his bodyguard, Steve, were killed. Killed? Yes. When the plane crashed, they were up front. Without safety belts. Oh. Anybody else killed? No, a half dozen were hurt, but they'll all live. Huh. So King is dead. Yes. Huh. That means we're free, Julia. He was the only one knew about the big brain. The way I was getting those women. Yes, Les, we're free. <laughs> Strange. The big brain picked the winners. But it was wrong about the plane crash. Wrong? <laughs> yes. After all, the only reason the plane crashed was because King forced the pilot to make an emergency landing. You're overlooking just one fact, Les. What? The plane crashed at 6.31 p.m. The exact moment that the big brain said it would. How do you explain that, Professor? This is the mysterious traveler again. Yes, young Professor DeWitt had a good deal to ponder about while he recovered from the hospital. Would a plane crash have occurred if Victor King hadn't forced the pilot to make an emergency landing? Or was that the crash the big brain predicted? It's hard to say. But one thing is certain. Professor DeWitt, for some strange reason, has lost all scientific interest in the big brain. Oh, that reminds me of next week's story, The Dark Underworld. It's about a strange old man who lives half his life in the maze of sewers beneath the streets of Manhattan, and he discovers it. Oh, you'll have to get off here. I'm sorry. I'm sure we'll meet again. I take this same train every week at this same time. You have just heard The Mysterious Traveler which is played by Maurice Tartlett. In the cast were Leon Janney, Marilyn Erskine, Santos Ortega, and John Marley. Original music was composed and played by Al Finnell. This is Bob Emmerich speaking. All characters in our story were fictitious, and any resemblance to the names of actual persons was purely coincidental. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.